All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you back. So let's go ahead and grab the bias chart. Amir had to clarify that playing Japanese Yahtzee because I was trading the yen. That's right. I was running around going, Kamikaze Yahtzee. That's exactly what I was doing, trading the yen. Kamikaze Yahtzee yen. That's right. All right. Let's get started. My humor is batted at a, uh, at, a, at, a, at a scale of zero right now, this early in the morning. Okay, so um, the euro dollar. So we hit a AB equals CD move yesterday, which uh, basically, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> provided us some support. Which is good, makes sense, you know. Now the question is, how much of a rally are we going to get from here um, in the in the uh, in the euro dollar? And uh, uh, obviously, we're getting a little bit of a rally right now. But is, is this, you know, is this rally sustainable? Um, you know, it's to be seen. Uh, but what but but what we will do is we're going to mark up that low is significant. Now this high here is also significant. Why? Because while we're while we're below here, that means that we're making lower highs and lower lows. Okay. Lower lower lows, lower highs. Okay. So if we can break that that series, uh, that turns the short term trend higher. Um, but you know that that means that this is going to be significant. All right, so the high here is basically 107.58, so I'm going to write down 107.60. Okay, resistance 1.0760. Okay, and frankly, if we break above 107.60, I'll probably I'll probably close out my Aussie short, my Kiwi short, more than likely, because then I know that the 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 dollar weakness that comes through the euro will probably you know probably feed into some of the other you know other currencies as well okay uh, I picked up some euro Aussie yesterday which has been good you know it's 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 profitable um, not by a huge amount but it, it is uh, it, it, I'll probably end up keeping that because I think the Aussie is gonna continue to underperform so anyway uh, support is obviously 106.65, okay? 1.0665. And we are in a bearish trend, okay? All right, let's go look at the cable. Now, the cable, now I'll tell you, if, 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 now the pound can be hit by uh, a tape bomb anytime. The thing you always have to think about with the cable, you know, you get some Brexit, you know, headline and the pound will get hit. Now, yesterday, you know, we uh, were here, said, okay, if we rally back to 125, that's going to be a resistance. Well, overnight we hit 125. So... Continues to be pretty, pretty, pretty big resistance, right? Yeah, big resistance. Now, what we can do, uh, rather than just write down a blanket 125, is we can we can write down that spike high right here, which is 125.15. Okay, if the dollar does weaken, the the cable has the potential of really um, rallying. Okay, it does because you think about it, the dollar the dollar index. Let's go over to the dollar index. The dollar index was just at you know 13 year highs or you know, but as as you know it, it's you, 
when the dollar hits 13 year highs and you see a headline like that, like on yesterday, it's very deceiving because you know you're at channel resistance, right? I mean, I saw it about, I don't know, 20 times yesterday. Dollars at 13 year highs. Did we hit 13 year highs? It's like, yeah, but we're at really key resistance. I mean, it's deceiving when you see that, right? Especially when, you know, you know, you know, bloggers and journalists and you know people reporting, you know, on the dollar and CNBC dollars at 13 year highs. It's like, yeah, but you know, we we are we barely hit it and we're at resistance. All right, so we're at resistance. I even had somebody, even somebody that doesn't trade, uh, asked me about, you know, hey Blake, how's things going? You know, yesterday, you know, how things going yesterday? Uh, you know, I'm like good, man. You must be, you know, really, you know, ripping it up. The dollar hit 13 year highs, and I'm like, y yeah, it did, but <laughs> you know, it's it's like okay, hit 13 year highs, yeah, buy two pips and then reversed. It's it's really just at resistance here. Um, but if 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 the dollar backs away from that those highs, we actually do back away. We should break out here and 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 rally towards. You know, I'm gonna, actually what I should do is I'm gonna write two levels of resistance because I I wanna I wanna say well what if you know what if the pound you know rips higher past 125.15 oops right here 125.60 is a 618 so let's let's mark that down to 1.2560 okay I think we need to we need to mark that up all right okay um, support So any dip down to 124 should be fairly well supported. We got 124, and then below 124 opens up 123 and a quarter, which you guys know is, you know. Okay, so 124, oops, 12325, 124, okay. All right. Let's go over to the Swissy. Really, really contemplating buying the Swissy here. I, I didn't buy it yet. You know, ahead of all this data that we have in less than an hour, and then with Janet Yellen speaking, it's yeah, tempting. But you know, you know, yesterday we were trading up here at one point zero zero, you know, four zero or something like that. And you know, I got asked about the Swissy. I said, you know, I'd buy. I'd be a buyer at you know parity and I didn't buy it yesterday when we hit parity I didn't uh, we bounced off there you know obviously a bunch of different times um, we're, we're sitting at parity right now but I think what will expose some downside here in the Swissy is a move below right you know, a move below 99.80 okay so a move below 99.80 will expose some downside. All right. Now resistance is 1.0060. If that gets taken out, then we know we know that you know we're on our way higher. We're still bullish. I mean, it's still bullish. I just I'm not. I don't own it yet. I mean, it's you know, it's it's it's. <laughs> It's hard to buy right now. I mean, you know, it, it's hard to buy with all this, you know, with everything that's happening today. As much as I want to buy the Swissy, it's 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 it's, it's you know, it's a tough decision just to start buying it outright right at this moment in time. All right. Um, dollar yen. So the dollar again. Now I'm going to take you out to the daily chart really quick. So the and let's delete this. Let's delete this. I can redraw those. 
let's delete this. Okay. Now, if you take the high from 2015 to the low of this year, we're at a 38% retracement. Obviously, very critical resistance. You know, we set up a you know a bit of a doji here, like a long shadow doji, which is a long wick up top. Uh, we're right at the 38% retracement. You know, this is why I was looking at it last night, thinking, okay, I'll just keep shorting the dollar yen, and, and and I kept shorting it, you know, above 109 and closing it out. Now I'm not short the dollar yen right now. I'm not. Okay, but. You can see the hesitation. You can see why we're hesitating here. All right. Now, personally, I mean, the way I think the way we have to look at it is if we break highs, the dollar is breaking out. So, in other words, if we break 109.75, that is extremely bullish for the dollar index. I don't think we're going to stop. Okay. In other words, if we break this 109.35, it's gonna because there there are there are a lot of traders right now fading this thing. There are a ton of traders right now saying, you know what, this has gone way too far, way too fast. We were just trading down at 10, you know, sub 102 post elections. We're at 109 and change. This thing's gonna this thing's gonna pull back. I mean, how many people are shorting the dollar yen right now? Think about that. You know, think about it. You know, there's so many people shorting right here. It's like, uh, it's it's because what is what is the what? And I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you guys a question. I'm gonna drink my coffee while I ask you this question. I want an answer from you. What? <coughs> excuse. Hold on one second. What is typical behavior of an investor slash trader? slash institutional manager slash <coughs> whoever. What's the typical behavior? It's common, common behavior of investors or traders. Jack, you're 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 correct. Benedict, you're correct. Luca, you're correct. Chad, you're correct. Jazzy, you're correct. No, the preferred behavior of market participants, preferred behavior is buy low, sell high. But what is the typical behavior. They try to pick tops and bottoms, right? They try to pick tops and bottoms. That is the, 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 that's a typical behavior of most investors or traders. Man, this thing is going way too far, way too fast. I'm going to short it up here. It's obviously overbought, you know, or it's way oversold. You know, it's definitely can't go lower than this. I'm going to go ahead and start buying it here. It's gone too far, too fast. It should, it's, it's, it, I'm going to start buying it. It's too cheap, right? The typical behavior of an investor or a trader or manager is, oh, dude, we've, we've gone from 102 to one, dude, I'm going to, I'm going to sell, I'm going to short it up here. I ain't going higher than 110. Hell no. Hell no. We just, we just, we just, we just rallied 700 pips. It can't go any higher than that. So the typical behavior right now is to short, or you know you got people that are just selling their longs, right? So what you, what happens here is you've got people that are shorting the dollar yen, trying to fade this strength. Like I said, I got call, I got I got I called out. I got um, a bunch of people asking me last week. Or last week, last yesterday, you know, hey, you know, should I be shorting the dollar here? It's gone, you know, it's we're up at resistance. It can't go any higher than this, you know, blah blah blah. Look, it's typical behavior. Typical behavior is I'm just going to fade the dollar yen here. I mean, I did it yesterday twice. 
I mean, I did get out. Okay. So, to me, what happens here is you've got people that are reducing their positions because they're, they're like, wow, okay, we've rallied so far, I'm going to go ahead and take profits. So, they're taking profits, so that means there's less people that are long. You've got a lot of people that are shorting, so they're, you know, they're, they're, they're fading the strength, right? And so, what the dangers of that is, is if we actually break highs, it's going to leave everybody in the dust. All right. Now, the, the, the Bank of Japan did open up, you know, some bond buying and then they're doing more bond buying and, you know, unlimited amounts and, and, and everything else too, which, you know, all, also argues the case that we could go a whole lot higher here as well. But I'm, I'm telling you guys that if the dollar yen can hold up above 108.50, the risks of a upside breakout are high. Okay, oops, not 105.50, 108. Now, if we break through 108.50, I'll be I'll be pretty comfortable in shorting dollar yen. I will be. I'll be comfortable in shorting dollar yen if we can break below 108.50. Because if we can if we can actually start you know putting in a lower low, you know, and lower high, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. So, um, but I'll tell you guys, the, 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 the typical behavior, which doesn't make it right behavior, but the typical behavior of, of traders is to fade strength, no matter if it's long or short. But my two cents are, if we break higher, here in the dollar yen, it's going to spur some massive dollar buying. And that also leads me to believe that the dollar index will actually start breaking out. And if the dollar index breaks out, everybody is going to be chasing the dollar. Everybody. Everybody. A lot of articles that came out about, you know, this Trump presidency and how it can create a dollar shortage of a little liquidity crunch. I see that as being an issue. Anyway, all right, guys, just a little, little ideas here. All right, let's go over to the CAD. Now, one, one of the things, I, I don't own, I, I'm not trading the Canadian right now. I, I bought it a couple of times. Uh, the Canadian, based on a Trump presidency, I would have thought, that we'd be a lot weaker, all right? The the dollar Canadian would be, or the, or the Canadian currency would be a lot weaker. We would have screamed past resistance. We haven't though. Um, the dollar Canadian continues to, uh, to to kind of boggle my mind and I really don't know what to do with it. I, I, I honestly look at the dollar Canadian and I'm not really too sure how to trade it at the moment. And that's okay, I mean, it. you know, I, I was, try to explain to you guys it's okay when you look at something when you look at something and you go I just don't know what to do just don't do anything with it I mean you know like I can't like I, I look at crude oil I go okay crude's weak now I know crude's up right now it's you know bounced from like 40 45 and change to 46 and change this morning I understand that but I look I overall look at the Canadian I'm like I just don't know I don't I don't know what to do with it I really I really don't okay um, and, and like I said, it's okay. I, you know, I, I can find things to do elsewhere. <laughs> There's obviously so much more I can trade than the Canadian. Um, you know, I haven't, I haven't come to the determination like, oh, I need to be buying the dollar Canadian right now because this is such a great value, or I need to be shorting it up here because I just feel the, you know, this grand, grandiose need to be shorting it. I, I just don't have those feelings at the moment with the dollar Canadian. But it doesn't mean that there's not tradable places for the Canadian. I mean, there may be, um, you know, we have the 618 here of this last move that comes in at, which let's just call it 133.90. Um, okay. You 
you know, we might have a little channel resistance here. So I, what I what I what I will do. Here, I'm just going to grab this really fast so I don't have to keep putting a bunch of lines all over the charts. Okay. 134.50 is resistance, 133.90, and I really don't know what to do with it. I, I mean, I, I know it's in a bullish trend. I know that. Okay, I do I do know that. 133.90, 134.50. I mean, look, we continue to move higher, so I, I know it's in a bullish trend. I, I get that. I just I don't know. You know, should I be buying the dollar Canadian right now? Um, you know, is, is there a reason for me to? Like crude's crude's in utter free fall, so I'm going long. And you know, the dollar index is up against its highs, but the dollar Canadian hasn't been following, so that makes me a little nervous about buying the dollar Canadian. Uh, you know, uh, you know, why hasn't the dollar Canadian gone up with this Trump win? I don't, I don't get that either. But at the same time, it's like, do you short the dollar Canadian because the dollar is so strong? You know. The, uh, again, it's like I look at it and I just can't. I can't. Make, I can't make heads or tails of it, which is is fine. Is just you know, again, it's just kind of quagmire that we're stuck in with in regards to Canadian, which is uh, which is okay. It's perfectly perfectly all right. It just um, it's just the way it is. All right, uh, let's go over to the Kiwi. Now the Kiwi has uh, performed pretty well. I'm uh, surprised as uh, as good as the Kiwi has performed, but uh, as you guys know, this support here, and and I, and I was looking at seventy twenty right there, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna write down seventy thirty as being seventy thirty five as being really key support because the low here is seventy thirty three, the low here was seventy thirty four, so basically seventy thirty five is major resistance. If we break that, and we're only you know. 50 pips away from it or whatever. If we break that, game over. It's kind of like if the dollar yen breaks higher, you know, Kiwi breaks lower, it's done. Stick a fork in it. I'm, I'm, I, I think that if we do break, um, if we do break uh, the 7030 then we're probably going to you know we're probably going to be making our way we're going to probably be making our way out into the, uh, the 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 mid 60 cent range you know 68 67 66 I, I think this is all very doable should we break through here because then we we snap the you know making making higher lows then it then it really puts in motion a much deeper pullback in the Kiwi again and that, that would be complemented by you know a dollar yen breaking out you know a lot of other things but I think that's really critical now resistance in the Kiwi you, you would think there's be some sort of bounce here but we really haven't seen a whole lot of a bounce in in the Kiwi you can see this this whole channel right here when I say this whole channel this channel here we've got a lot of crap going on but Let's get rid of this one really fast. Okay, this channel here. Okay, we're below it. So while we stay below, well, it's really seventy-one forty, right? But we can't even make. We can't even get back above this uh, this 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 trend line here. But I'm going to write down seventy-one forty as resistance for now. Okay, bearish. All right, when I get back, Aussie, dollar index, peso, Swedish krona, Norwegian krona, lots of stuff to talk about. Don't go anywhere. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, Yellen's testimony, is it, is it out already? Hold on. Um, uh, comments, Yellen sees inflation hitting 2% objective over next... Her testimony must be coming out right now. Um, hold on, let me read you all this stuff that because the dollar is ripping. Um, Yellen risk of falling behind curve appears limited. Current monetary policy stance is moderately accommodative. Yellen uh, says rate hike could be appropriate relatively soon. Um, um, 
see scope for some further improvement in the labor market. It appears to be scope for, uh, must remain forward-looking in setting policy. Expects economic growth to continue at a moderate pace. Um, Yellen says risk of falling behind the curve appears limited. Inflation increased somewhat since earlier this year. Um, that her the 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 text to her monetary policy uh, to her 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 um, what should we call just came out. Consumer spending, moderate business investment, soft. Judge risk outlook roughly balanced. So we saw a little bit of dollar strength, and then it's kind of paired back a little bit. I, you know. Here, let's go over to a five-minute chart of the dollar. So the dollar spiked up and then came, it's coming right back down again. Um, a little bit of volatility. I'm about ready to sell some euro right here. Sold some at 29. So I sold a little euro at 29. I'm, you know, I, I don't mind sitting in a little bit of. I mean, it all, it all to me, it sounds like that she's, uh, she's, she's pretty much gearing the market up for, for, for a hike. So, um, I just bought a little bit just to try to scalp out, scalp in and out. I bought some at, or a shorted some at 29, the euro dollar. So we came all the way down to 107.07, back up to 107.33. I mean, the Kiwi and the Aussie are just still sitting there. Pounds just sitting there. Dollar yen hasn't really done a whole lot. Let's see what the dollar yen just did. Dollar yen spiked up to 109.30 and then back down to 109.10. Um, Okay, excuse me one second. Sorry guys, my uh, my little uh, mutt over here sounded like he was barfing, so I had to get up and go and make sure he was okay. He's fine. Um, I'm out of the euro for quick 11 pips. Just got out at 17. Okay, uh, I'm just going to kind of sit. Um, God, this Aussie came right back down. We're two, three pips from lows in the Aussie. Ten pips from lows in the Kiwi. It's okay. I'll sit in those. Um, okay, let's go back to what we were doing earlier. So, um, oh, the euro is really coming down.
basically, you know, um, basically, seems like to me she's just preparing the the, the market for a for a hike. But I'm not going to sit around. I, like I said, I I I I'm I'm I'm. Now that we got the text out of the way, it'll be ooh, peso new highs. Um, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what uh, she said. Hold on, really quick. I'm sorry again. Stand by. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, dogs are being, they're making a ruckus this morning. Um, Aussie just hit new low. Speaking of which, we got to do the Aussie. Let's go ahead and do the Aussie. So the Aussie employment data came in weaker than expected. I am short the Aussie dollar. Um, we are, you know, trading right around our lows of the session right now. Uh, the Aussie's broken. You guys all know that, right? Okay. The Aussie's broken. We're below the 200-day moving average. We couldn't get back above that last night. Um, while we're while we trade below the spike low here, you know, and and the and just so just so everybody's clear, the reason why I'm short the Aussie is because the false breakout of this triangle. False breakouts lead to breakdowns. All right, so I'm short the Aussie, uh, and 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 below this 161% extension. If we break below 74.20, I'm probably going to get more aggressive. All right, because then I think we're heading down towards 72, 73 cents, which then will bounce around for a while. But um, this is uh, this to me is a you know a big breakdown. Um, so I'm hanging on to my Aussie US dollar shorts, obviously. Uh, today, support is going to be at 74.20, and it's huge. This is really big support. I would expect us to bounce from here, 74.20, massive support. Now, while we trade below um, 75, what's the spike low here? 75.06, so I'll just say 75. 10, it's bearish, okay, it's bearish, okay, let's go over to the dollar index, so here's the, here's the, here's the Dixie, um, obviously we got to, you know, take yesterday's highs at 1.00, Five five. When we went as high as five, what did we go as high as yesterday? Five seven. I mean, I'm I'm gonna write down one point zero zero five zero again. One hundred point five zero. That is mega resistance. Obviously, we probed above it yesterday. Okay, we probed above it, stalled today. You know, it's currently a doji, but it's very early in the very early in the day. Um, and, oh man, this euro, I left, I left a good 12 pips on the table. Damn, this euro is just still getting destroyed here. Um, Aussie new lows. Kiwis near its lows of the day. Euro's about ready to dip. Aussie new lows. Peso new highs. Stoller, guys. Okay, anyway. Um, let's 
it's bearish. Okay, dollar index resistance, and let's uh, let's take support as the lows from yesterday. Actually, I, I have to take this uh, right ninety nine fifty. I just don't know if I really want to write that. Um, I mean, I, I think we have to write 99.90, and while we're above 99.90, it's, you know, well, actually, while we're above 99.20, let's just assume we break 99.90. That's 99.20 is going to be major support on the way back down, just in, just in case. I mean, just in case the dollar gets beat down today. Um, you know, because if the CPI data comes in here in the next 20 minutes, if it comes in weak or some of the data comes in weak, I mean, the dollar could pull back. Okay, because now we know what Janet Yellen is going to say in her testimony, which leads us to believe that there's a rate hike coming, you know, probably next month. Um, if inflation is starting to run hot, well, we might actually get a couple rate hikes, you know, the expectations might start to ramp up for rate hikes, more rate hikes sooner. Bonds are coming down, gold's coming down, silver's coming down. Inflation, inflation, peso. All right, so we have Banco de Mexico today, um, 20 is support resistance. I'm going to say any move up to, let's figure this out. This, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Look at this peso here. Just when you think the peso can't go any higher, and it's done going higher. Oops. Twenty fifty. Twenty sixty be all this previous support here, 2060. I'd be a seller at 2060. Now, um, by the way, the Bank, bank of Mexico is expected to raise rates by half a basis point. If they only raise a half a basis point, I think the US dollar Mexican peso can go higher. Now, if they surprise the market and raise it by like three quarter basis point, then the US dollar Mexican peso might actually go lower, but um, it's still bullish. So if they only raise a half a basis point, we might actually scream up to here and then you could be a seller up here or somewhere. For those of you that trade the peso, I like trading the peso. It's fun. You just have to trade it really small because it moves so freaking fast. And if you're on the wrong side of this thing and you're too large, you will get killed. During the elections, I got hit in the peso pretty hard. And so I know what it's like. I got I got hit I got spanked pretty bad in the peso. This is one of the this is one of the currencies that actually took uh, a nice clip of money from me on the election. Okay, um, where am I at? U.S. dollar, Norwegian krona. Hmm. You guys, you guys know that this is this is see this downtrend line. How bullish is it if we break above 852? Bigly. It'd be bigly. 852. That'd be a bigly breakout. We 
we got a nice little inverted head and shoulder pattern playing out here anyway. Um, support right now is 840. Let's go over to the Swedish Krona. This Swedish Krona is so bullish and it's so, I mean, like yesterday, you know, I was, I mean, I was going to buy it yesterday because it dipped, you know, when it dipped yesterday down to here, I was like, ah, you know, I'm going to get long because this thing's just, it's so annoying because it's going higher and the dips are shallow. So you're not getting enough of a dip to get long. It's so annoying. Um, 909 is support, resistance, 920, we'll write down 923 because this keeps grinding higher. So 9.09. .09. 9.23 and it's bullish. The good news is our bias charts have been directional, right? Well, that's good news.